What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about Tesla and the company's solar business. They have recently relaunched their solar website and offering to consumers over the weekend. Uh, I think this is really interesting news and a clue potentially to where the future of Tesla's energy generation business is headed. So in this episode, we're going to break down what Tesla's new offering is and how this could impact the financials of the company. And overall, I think, you know, the bigger picture here is Tesla's energy business is extremely underrated. All the attention goes on in the Model 3 and the cars they're making, but really Tesla is much more than an automaker. They're a whole energy company and solar is a huge part of that. And this is a big change to that piece of their business. So over the weekend, they revamped the website and of offering uh, solar in a very simple new format in available for sale, but also even more importantly, perhaps for rental or basically outright leasing of solar panels. So to understand a little bit more about this, let's take a step back. So in 2016, uh, Q4, Tesla acquires Solar City, which is a company started by Elon Musk and his cousin uh, that sold solar panels in the US and various countries to different residential and commercial customers. Basically, they were a solar panel installer and operator. Tesla acquires the company outright, merges that solar division in with its battery division to create Tesla Energy. Since then, though, Tesla's solar installations, basically what was Solar City's business, and this is the main metric of their business, how many megawatts were deployed each quarter, has been falling dramatically. So you can see in Q4 2016, the quarter that Tesla acquired Solar City, they deployed over 200 megawatts of solar panels. That was down almost 90% to just 29 megawatts as of Q2 2019. And if we take a step back even further, you can see that that quarter, you know, Solar City previously had huge growth. They were growing rapidly, their solar deployments, but then it sort of fell off a cliff uh, when Tesla acquired them. And although that may seem like a bad trend, or you may be like, oh my God, the solar business is, is, is crumbling, you know, what's going on? If you take a look at the under the hood, there's is something that explains a huge, huge chunk of this. And a lot of it has to do with cash management. A huge chunk of the business that Solar City was doing was operating leases. They were essentially putting up all the money and just putting the panels on your roof and you were paying them a monthly fee. Uh, this meant that Tesla or Solar City had to get huge financing to cover all these projects and was in fact bundling loans uh, or basically solar backed assets and selling them off to investors to raise capital for this business model. But then Tesla over time after they acquired Solar City, I found this really interesting report and chart um, shows that they and they were t t saying they were going to do this when they acquired Solar City is that we're going to totally shift away from this leasing model and move to outright sales. So as you can see, Tesla in comparison to all the other solar makers was totally shifting their business. Now, all these other solar makers in the residential solar solar market like Vivint Solar and Sunrun are still only doing less than 20% of every install as of Q3 2018 was a direct sale. Tesla was about 80% direct sales and that's probably even gone up further since then. This is the latest data we have. So Tesla was shifting to these much more capital efficient uh, sales of outright systems instead of leasing. Well, now that is basically all changed with this new solar update. They're getting back into the leasing business. Moving back into the update today. So they've really, I think, kind of done a little bit of innovation in terms of the simplicity of the process of solar installation for consumers. So Tesla's offering three types of products for its solar panels, small, medium, and large, super simple sizes. So for me, I'm located in New York. This is just what popped up when I hit the website. You can see they have a small system, uh, 3.8 kilowatts with for a 1,000 and 2,000 square foot home. Uh, it's basically, and they also calibrate it for your utility bill, best suited for a home with an average electric bill of 50 to 70 a month. And then it goes all the way up to a 3,000 square foot home plus for the large system. And so this is where the innovation happens though. This is the payment guide. Um, as you can see, this is the price after incentives. It gives me the price breakdown, um, and then it shows even what those incentives are. There's still federal and state incentives for solar panels, which is awesome. But the most important part, renting your solar. So you can rent your solar. So the monthly payment um, is sort of the huge innovation here. Tesla's bundling all service, installation costs, maintenance costs, no long-term contract into one really simple price. Uh, it's available in most utilities. You have to check if your utilities on board. You have to own your house as well. The only sort of catch is that it costs $1,500 if you want to remove the panels and get them off your roof to repair your roof or sell your house, or you just don't want it anymore. So this is, uh, you know, basically a very streamlined and different approach to traditional residential solar, where they go to your house, they have to take an estimate. Um, they do a sort of boutique custom approach to every single house, which I think adds a lot of cost and complexity to the process. Instead, Tesla is just saying, let's do, do you want small, medium, or large? And then they've rolled everything into this super convenient monthly price that ideally will be, allow you to start saving money from day 
day one. So Elon Musk has this tweet where he explains it that says, with the new lower Tesla pricing, it's like having a money printer on your roof if you live in a state with high electricity costs. Still better to buy, but the rental option makes the economics obvious. And so now what we have is Tesla essentially relaunching their solar business with this amazing pricing that allows you to save money off the bat, no long-term contract, you know, very minimal uh, cancellation fee for what is going on. And so, I, you know, I think this is going to be a huge, huge catalyst for turning around this chart of megawatt deployed of the solar business. So now we have, you know, a very, very exciting dynamic in that in the battery business, you know, installations have been soaring. I did a video about the mega packs. It looks like really exciting growth in energy storage. And now energy generation and solar in the residential thing is going to pick up, uh, you know, we'll see how, how much th this changes the solar installations overall. But I think this has got to drive growth in Tesla's business. But on the flip side, it does leave me with a little bit more questions than answers because Tesla, you know, there's what about the solar roof? Like this has been the product that's been touted as the next generation solar product. Nobody's going to get panels anymore because Tesla's coming out the solar roof. That's been in development for about three years now. They're actually, they were just on version three. Elon Musk has said that a big ramp in the solar roof product line is about to come later this year. But as they're launching this tesla.com slash solar, they basically stopped mentioning the solar roof. So I don't know. The flip side of this is I think, yes, this will grow the solar business in a certain way, but it seems like the solar roof is taking longer or more delayed, or I could be reading this wrong and the solar roof is totally on track and they're going to launch it simultaneously. But I do think it's worth noting that's a little bit weird that Tesla went so far away from leasing so far away, and, you know, pushing to direct sales, pushing to the solar roof. And now all of a sudden out of nowhere, the reversing trend and saying, we want to go basically back to this leasing model and back to normal panels. Um, they did redesign the panels though. So they're like a different Tesla solar panel that looks better than normal panels. So that is an improvement. Um, but I also, what I, what I really think is going on here and it, is that the cost of installation and of really good solar panels has actually fallen dramatically in the past three years, making it much more attractive for Tesla to get into this business. And going all the way back to Solar Cities S1, I think we can get some really, really interesting clues because this is really old data, but Solar City in their IPO prospectus filed in 2012 finds shows basically sums up the opportunity of solar, residential solar in this one chart, which is, you know, utility prices of energy in the United States are super fixed. It's a monopoly and they're rising over time. And so as you can see this with this distribution sort of like upside down U chart, the average electricity price has been rising over time and actually by, by a decent amount. And then there's a certain threshold that they mark here, um, a, an electricity blended price, which is, I guess, sort of an average out electricity price of 15 cents per kilowatt hour is where solar is break even. So every single year as electricity costs rise and as the cost of solar decreases, there's more and more homes where it makes economic sense to get solar energy. And this was in 2010. But as you can see, the panel pricing trends, you know, this is really old data, but it illustrates the point of solar panels get cheaper every quarter while normal electricity gets more expensive. And back in 2010, Solar City estimates in their S1 that just in the US alone, there was $58 billion opportunity for people that where solar energy was already cheaper than what they were paying their utility. Moving forward to 2019, this is what the US residential solar market looks like. And as you can see, huge growth to 2016 and then sort of dips a little and is returning to growth. And what I think is so interesting is that's almost exactly timed with Solar City's switch to a lease to a direct sales model. So Solar City slowing down their leases, I think actually slow down the entire growth of the US residential solar market. Solar City was one of the biggest players and them stop pushing the, the gas on growing and marketing, um, I think slow down the whole industry, but now it's bouncing back. And I think, you know, those two or three years where cost declined is making it even more economically attractive. And so the other thing I think that's very interesting to consider is this is a very capital intensive business. If you're only paying 50 to hundred bucks a month to get these solar panels on, who's paying the cost for installing them? Initially, it's gotta be Tesla. They have to put up, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars to install all these systems up front. So where's that money going to come from? Um, I have to think if they want to be smart with their capital, like this doesn't make much sense unless they're really thinking they're going to bundle all of these solar panel leases or subscriptions and sell them off to a third party. That's that is what Solar City did, and that is what they could do, which would you know take some of the stress off of their balance sheet. That is one of the questions I have: is you know how are they going to fund all these different solar projects? So moving on to the financials of Tesla Energy overall, here's the quarterly revenue for Tesla's energy business spiked when they bought Solar City. Um, has sort of been flatlining in growth as the solar business has been shrinking and batteries have been growing. The gross margin uh, is been pretty low and pretty weak, 12% last quarter. And then we have the gross profit in dollar terms here, which has also been pretty weak, you know, basically break even revenue for the energy business for a while. But now I think we're reaching this inflection point where we've had, you know, Tesla basically reinventing their solar business. Now they're relaunching the leases. So I think we could see solar revenue start to grow again, which is a huge reversal in the trend. And then we have these battery storage deployments that are going to continue rising rapidly and grow their energy storage business. So I think this, this energy revenue line is set to 
grow dramatically in the coming quarters and years. And we've sort of hit this inflection point where the business model is working, they found product market fit, and they're kind of running with it. So that is the wrap up of Tesla's solar business. If you're interested in solar panels, there is now an amazing deal to check out. So you should all go to tesla.com and slash solar if you're interested in it and, and, and you know check out the options. Let me know what you think for sure. Um, I do think this is a little bit of a head scratcher in terms of what's happening with the solar roof and how they're going to fund it. Um, but you know we'll see how it plays out from here. I have a lot of questions about this that I hope get answered on the next company conference call, but we'll see about that later. Anyway, this is HyperChange. Huge shout out to all of our Patreon supporters, producers, fun in the channel. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.